On a planet far away, Gore and his daughter Love are wandering through a barren desert. They are the last of their people and have nowhere else to go. Starvation is keeping them on the brink of death and Gore prays to his god Rapu for help, but nothing happens. Love eventually dies in her father's arms and after Gore buries her, he starts hearing a whispering voice calling for him. Gore follows the voice until he finds an oasis filled with fresh water, but he also accidentally trips and cuts his hand on a sword. Then he sees a bunch of fruit and immediately begins eating desperately until he's scolded by his god Rapu, who is just hanging around. Gore tells him that the land has been destroyed but his belief never wavered, so he expects the promised eternal reward. However Rapu laughs at him, saying there was never a reward for the underdogs. He's currently celebrating killing the latest wielder of the Necrosword, a cursed blade capable of killing gods. Rapu doesn't care about all the followers who died for him, saying suffering for him is their purpose and that he can get more later. Furious, Gore renounces his god, causing Rapu to begin strangling him. Suddenly the Necrosword raises into Gore's hand and shows him the steps to acquire great power, insisting he must kill all the gods. Gore lets the curse take over his body and kills Rapu, swearing he'll kill the rest of the gods too. On planet Indigar, Korg tells a group of aliens the story of Thor, the god of thunder. He was raised as a warrior since he was a baby and became a legendary hero, saving the world many times and having countless lovers through the years. His true love was a woman from Earth called Jane, who broke up with him years ago. Afterward Thor lost his whole family, his mighty hammer Mjolnir, and even his homeland Asgard. Depression hit him hard and he lost his god physique, but after gaining a new weapon called Stormbreaker, he joined a group of heroes known as the Guardians of the Galaxy and started to travel with them around the universe to go on wacky adventures together. He also went back into shape with lots of hard work but was still hiding a lot of pain inside his gorgeous body. Now he's given up on finding love and only comes along when he's needed in battle. Nearby, the Guardians are engaging in a vicious fight against bird-like invaders and not doing very well. Soon Thor finally arrives and the local king informs him things were peaceful around here until their gods were murdered. With Stormbreaker in hand, Thor jumps right into the battle, easily defeating enemies all over the battlefield by hitting them or shooting lightning at them. When two enemies attack him at the same time, Thor simply opens his legs to stop them before jumping to make them crash. After kicking a big vehicle, Thor breaks into the temple and goes up the tower to hit the enemy leader, finally putting an end to the invasion but also destroying the temple in the process. On Earth, Jane is at the hospital for treatment because she's been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, something she's only shared with two close friends. Since she's a scientist she's been doing some research of her own and so has her professor friend, but they aren't able to find anything that could help her and her chances aren't good. Desperate for a solution, Jane decides to start looking into Asgardian magic and learns that Mjolnir might be of help. Meanwhile the people of Asgard have started their new home on Earth with Valkyrie as their queen. She took over after Thor left but she hates the job because it consists of lots of politics and boring meetings and she's supposed to be a warrior. There are tours that allow foreigners to look around new Asgard including a visit to the remaining pieces of Thor's hammer Mjolnir, which lies inside a special display. When Jane goes to see it, the sky suddenly turns dark and the pieces start to glow. Back to Thor, the king gifts him two huge screaming goats as a reward for the help, and when the group leaves the goats cause total chaos inside their spaceship. Then the team checks the system for distress signals and is shocked to see a huge amount of them begging for help. It turns out Gore has been killing gods on thousands of planets and has earned the nickname God Butcher. One of these distress calls comes from Lady Sif, an Asgardian warrior who used to be in Thor's team. Desperate to help her, Thor decides to leave the Guardians behind so he can go back to his people. After the Guardians leave with a ship, Thor uses Stormbreaker to teleport with Gore and the goats to Sif's location. They end up on an icy land where they find the skeleton of a huge creature whom Thor calls the nicest god ever. Nearby Sif is wounded and missing an arm, but she's well enough to share that she followed Gore here only to fall for his trap and barely got to escape. Gore's objective is to kill every god in the universe and his next stop is New Asgard. On Earth, Gore arrives at New Asgard and uses the Necrosword to control the shadows and summon a bunch of monsters. In just a few seconds, chaos takes over the city and flames begin to spread, so Valkyrie shows up in her Pegasus to start fighting the monsters off with her sword. Soon Thor appears as well and while Korg takes Sif to safety, Thor joins the fight. He and Valkyrie are taking down a bunch of monsters when suddenly a ball of lightning lands in the middle of the battlefield, moving at great speed to hit the monsters too. Thor realizes it's Mjolnir and calls for it, but after going through another monster, the hammer ignores Thor and goes to its new owner. This woman is wearing Thor's clothes and handling Mjolnir like a pro, making it split into pieces to attack multiple monsters at once before it regains its form. When the woman takes off her helmet, Thor is shocked to see it's Jane. A flashback shows how their relationship used to be. At first they got along nicely and shared lots of happy moments together, sharing what looked like a perfect relationship. One drunk night, Thor even asked Mjolnir to promise it'd always protect Jane, and the hammer glowed to agree. However with time they became more distant because Thor was always busy with his missions and Jane had a lot of work to do as a famous scientist. Eventually Jane got tired of the walls they were putting between them and broke up with Thor by leaving him a note. Back in the present, Thor wants to talk, 
But Jane wants to concentrate on fighting the monsters. At that moment Thor sees Gore, who begins fighting Thor with a necrosword. After exchanging a few hits, Gore pins Thor against a car, and when Thor tries to defend himself, Gore just hits him against the car and makes a monster hold him down. Then Gore tries to take Stormbreaker, but Thor gets angry and activates his lightning powers, freeing himself from the monster before pushing Gore off. Thor throws lightning at him as Jane and Valkyrie appear to support him, so Gore sees the disadvantage and decides to disappear. However the shadows are still around and they release a bunch of monsters inside children's rooms to kidnap them. Soon every Asgardian kid is inside a cage-like monster and when Thor and Jane try to go after it, Gore teleports the cage away. Afterward Valkyrie holds a meeting with all the Asgardians to decide how to proceed. Thor can't stop staring at Mjolnir and tries to call it again, but Stormbreaker comes to him instead. An argument ensues among the citizens so Thor comes forward and tells them to calm down while he tries something. When he raises Stormbreaker, his powers fail and he makes a hole in the ceiling before destroying a monument outside. He returns to the room and a new argument starts only to be suddenly interrupted by a floating head. This is Axel, one of the kidnapped kids that has magic eyes. This power allows him to bring an illusion of Thor into the cage so he can take a look around and discover where they are. When the illusion ends, Thor goes back and informs the others that the kids are in the Shadow Realm, where Gore will be the most powerful. Before they go there, they need to get reinforcements. The group decides they need to travel to Omnipotent City, where all of Earth's gods gather. Since Stormbreaker isn't working well, they'll use a ship pulled by the goats to sail through the Axe's power. While Valkyrie gets a ship from an exhibition, Jane goes to the bathroom and reveals that when she lets go of the transformation, her body shows how sick she is. Her reflection makes her remember how her own mother died in the hospital too and it makes her so angry that she uses Mjolnir to destroy the sink. Meanwhile Axel tries to tell the other kids stories of Thor so they won't be afraid. Gore interrupts them to scare them by killing a small monster, and when Axel says Thor will save them, Gore reveals that's exactly what he wants. Sometime later, the team makes it to Omnipotence City and puts on some disguises to blend in with the crowd. There are lots of amazing gods around, but the one making a grand entrance is Zeus, whom Thor calls his inspiration. After doing some fancy tricks with his thunderbolt, Zeus proves to be a jerk because instead of discussing important matters, he wants to plan naughty parties and see which god got the most sacrifices from their people. It doesn't seem like they can trust him so the team begins arguing over how to proceed, but Zeus hears them and calls Thor to the central stage. Thor informs everyone about Gore and asks for help, but Zeus doesn't care about the death of some minor gods and chains Thor down before disrobing him. Finally noticing who he is, Zeus reminds him that each god must watch over their own people, so he has no interest in helping Thor rescue a bunch of Asgardians or lending him his thunderbolt, which he uses to show off some tricks again. Then Zeus tells the crowd not to worry because Gore will never be able to reach Eternity, a very powerful being that lives in the center of the universe and can grant a wish to the person that summons it. This means Gore may want to use his wish to get rid of all the gods at once. Omnipotent City is supposed to be a secret place but now that Thor has come, Gore may use him to reach them, so Zeus orders his guards to keep Thor here. The rest of the group jumps in to fight the guards and Thor breaks the chains to use them as weapons. They fight fantastically as a team by combining their different fighting styles, and soon the guards are defeated. Furious, Zeus strikes Korg with his thunderbolt, causing him to become a bunch of rubble. Next Zeus tries to strike Thor, but he catches the thunderbolt and throws it back, making it pierce through Zeus' chest. Afterward Thor checks on Korg and discovers he's still alive on just his face. More guards are coming, so Valkyrie ties Korg's face to her hair to keep him safe while he whistles to summon the goats, who break through the window bringing the ship. Valkyrie steals Zeus' thunderbolt and then the team finally escapes. On their way to the Shadow Realm, Thor shows Jane the space dolphins that are flying near the ship. Making use of the romantic moment, Thor admits he still loves her and that he wants to get back together. Jane has no choice but to tell him about her cancer, but Thor shows his support and promises to tackle everything together, then they share a kiss. When they finally reach the Shadow Realm everything turns black and white, including themselves. Stormbreaker's rainbow bridge disappears, so the ship just lands on the desolated planet with a thump. The cage is nearby but empty, so they enter a building and Jane finds some papers with Gore's plans. It turns out he wanted to bring Thor here to steal Stormbreaker and use its power to open a bridge into eternity. Janes rushes to tell the others that it's a trap and throws Stormbreaker into space to keep it safe. At that moment Gore shows up and Jane throws Mjolnir at him, but Gore dodges it and controls the shadows to capture the heroes. He asks Thor to call Stormbreaker and when he refuses, he makes the shadows start hurting Jane and Valkyrie. Desperate to help them, Thor summons Stormbreaker, and all that sudden power shakes the entire planet and frees them from the shadows. Then Gore uses the Necrosword to bring out a bunch of shadow monsters and another battle begins. While Jane and Valkyrie fight the beasts, Thor's Stormbreaker meets Gore's Necrosword, and the goats have to take Korg's face away from the violence. After exchanging a few hits with Gore, Thor is distracted by a beast, so Valkyrie fights him with a thunderbolt. She manages to hit him a few times, but it doesn't do enough and Gore stabs her with her own weapon. When Thor tries to run to her, the shadows try to hold him down, but he quickly frees himself and shoots some lightning at Gore 
who shields himself with an acrosword. Jane reaches Valkyrie to rescue her and brings her to Thor, who uses Stormbreaker to open the bridge. However Gore and his shadows use that moment to grab onto the axe and steal it from Thor while he and the others are teleported away. The team lands on Earth and Jane drops Mjolnir, revealing her body is incredibly weak right now. Thor takes his friends to the hospital and the doctor shares bad news, using Mjolnir has been killing Jane faster. She wants to keep on fighting, but Thor confesses he wants to have more time with her and convinces her to stay. On his way out, Valkyrie gives him the Thunderbolt, which Thor uses to reach Eternity. Meanwhile Gore has finally reached Eternity and has brought the kids with him. He puts Stormbreaker down to start the process of opening the door and the whole place shakes, causing a piece of a huge statue to fall. It almost crushes the children, but Thor arrives just in time to catch it and throw it away. As soon as Gore sees him, he uses the Necrosword to start summoning monsters, so Thor gathers the children and tells them to grab any object they can find to use as a weapon. Then using the Thunderbolt, he shares his power with all the kids so they can help him fight. A fierce battle begins as the kids clash against the monsters, fighting with all their might to prove they are worthy as guardians. As monsters fall all over the place and the children keep them busy, Thor goes after Gore, keeping up with him until Gore takes the Thunderbolt to throw it away. Thor must continue fighting hand to hand and Mjolnir senses this on Earth, so it appears in front of Jane. Soon Gore overpowers Thor and almost stabs him, so Thor has to stop Necrosword with his hands. At that moment Jane arrives on Valkyrie's Pegasus and throws Mjolnir at Gore to get him off her boyfriend. Thor uses the chance to retrieve the Thunderbolt, and now he and Jane can fight Gore together. However Jane notices that the door is about to open, so she sends Thor to retrieve Stormbreaker while she fights Gore and the kids continue to destroy the monsters. The shadows are holding onto Stormbreaker pretty tightly, so Thor has to start hitting them with the Thunderbolt. At first Gore seems to be overpowering Jane, but she makes a jump to attack with Mjolnir and creates some cracks in the Necrosword. At that moment Thor finally frees Stormbreaker and throws it at Axel so that all the kids can return home. Afterward Thor uses the Thunderbolt as two daggers, trapping the Necrosword between them so Jane can throw Mjolnir at it, finally breaking it. Gore manages to catch the hilt and tries to rebuild it, but Jane catches the other pieces with Mjolnir and summons some lightning that turns every sword piece into ash. While Jane falls to her knees, Gore sees that the gate to eternity has been opened and crosses it, teleporting all three of them. Before Gore can make his wish, Thor looks at a dying Jane and tells Gore he isn't looking for revenge or death, he's looking for love. Then Thor goes to Jane's side to spend her last moments together. Seeing this reminds Gore of his own daughter, but he doesn't want to wish for her because he's dying from the corruption of the Necrosword. Thor and Jane promise love won't be alone, so Gore makes his wish and love comes back, saying goodbye to his father before he dies. Jane also says goodbye and shares a kiss with Thor before her body disappears into glowing dust. Sometime later, Jane becomes a legend in New Asgard and they make a statue for her. Valkyrie goes back to being queen and Sif helps train the children in self-defense. Korg gets his body back and finds a boyfriend from his species. Thor is raising Gore's daughter as his own and they share simple family things like breakfast, but he also has to teach her how to control her eternity powers. They often go adventuring with Thor using Mjolnir and Love using Stormbreaker so they can fight together and help people in need. As they travel the universe together, they become known as Love and Thunder. Meanwhile Jane's spirit arrives at Valhalla, the Asgardian heaven, and she's invited to join the Hall of the Gods. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.